Coming to you live from my apartment, it's Rob has a podcast, and now here's the guy who's the leader of the Nerd Alliance. I am Rob Sesternino. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Rob has a podcast, and we have such a treat for you here today because we get to catch up with one of my old friends. Here we are. It was 10 seasons ago since the heroes and the healers and the hustlers were running around Fiji and back with us, America's favorite urologist. It's Dr. Mike. Dr. Mike, how are you? Hi, guys. What's up? How are you doing? Knock, knock. Knock, knock. You know, I have a lot of pressure here, Rob, because of you. Why? Because everybody that sees me on a podcast now expects me to tell a freaking joke right mm -hmm. so it's like that's a lot of pressure i'm not a comedian but i have a knock knock joke i have a dr pepper joke i feel like there's the last time i came on a podcast they didn't have a good joke and then you didn't ask me back for a year like okay well dr mike it's a pleasure to have you back here with us i don't even remember the last time we talked about survivor it's been a minute so when you reached huh? out you said hey i want to come on the podcast this year i said let's do it let's make it happen yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I really, you know, I've missed Survivor. I feel like I watch the episodes every week and I talk to Barry about it, my wife, people that don't know me. And I, like, she doesn't want to talk to me about it. She's tired of talking to me about Survivor. She's tired of listening to me say, oh, I remember that island. I was on that island. That's the. Yeah. That's the way I learned, you know. Now, so, Dr. Mike, did you uh, keep up with all the seasons? You've watched Survivor all the way through. Every episode, no break every for you. Season. Yeah, no break. Yeah. no break. The good okay. and the bad. The good, yeah, the bad, okay. and the ugly. Okay, so we'll we'll get into all of that. But I guess before we talk Survivor, what's the update with you? How have you been over the last couple of years? I think we've been great. My kids have gotten older. My older daughter's in college. My middle kid is a senior my little one is now 14 and a freshman one of the uh one of the favorite that you know i i was on survivor i had to listen to this guy cole and we'll get back to cole in a little bit because he also ate worms on the show yeah. but like i i had to listen to this guy talk about rock climbing all day long and i got off the show and a rock gym opened and so like i started going to the rock gym and one of my all-time favorite things to do I give him credit is rock climbing. And so I rock climb literally oh. like once a week, I go into a rock climbing. Yes. Okay. Yeah. With that one of our podcasters, Taryn is very into that too. Dr. Mike. Yeah. Have you ever tried it? No, uh, not indoor rock climbing. I, I climbed the rock wall, uh, once. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's like a rock wall, but there's like 60 of them and they change the little holds and it's just hard and a great workout. You would be okay. good at it because you're so fit. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Mike. I appreciate it. Are that. you still doing the videos? No, I, I don't do, I don't know. What was I doing? Uh, P90X uh, then? You know, I, 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 you know, honestly, I have so much stuff to work out. I can't like be watching somebody else uh, exercise. I have to be just like exercising and also watching a show. Okay. So you so need I like a, a treadmill or something. Yeah, yeah, I've been doing I've been doing more weights than uh, than the bike or the treadmill lately, uh -huh. but yeah. So, but yeah, I got a like, uh, Dr. Mike. I do a daily suits podcast, so uh, I'm, I'm always oh watching God. something. I uh, I got Ethan to start yes. last year to start working out with me like two or three times a week. So we oh, go fun. we go to a trainer and we the guy makes us lift weights, and I'm actually lifting more than I lifted in med school. So I lifted in med school, and then I took like. A twenty something year break, like a twenty three year break, and I started lifting again, and it's great. I love it. I actually okay. love lifting. Doctor Mike, would you consider doing the challenge CBS? No. No. Did you watch <laughs> no, I, it? Did, did yeah, you watch yeah, it for yeah. Desi? Yes, of course I did. I watched every single episode. I love. Look, I'm never gonna haul brawl somebody, right? And it sounds so dumb because it's only one I time. Made a it season. easy now. They did with the pads and stuff. <laughs> and so, yes, you know, look, in a perfect world, if I didn't have a real job and I didn't have to go away from my family for seven weeks and hang out with all of these, like, nut jobs in a house, and I yeah. think nut jobs in a purely affectionate way, I, yeah, definitely, I would want to do it. And, you know, I think somebody mentioned in the questions, like, like, are you still friends with Jay? How is he hanging out with Jay? Yeah, like, I root for him. I root for Desi. 
Like, ben, it's a lot what more. Up, ben? I loved watching Ben on it. I don't understand how Ben is. How come he couldn't get sick on my season of Survivor? <laughs> He's been like medevac twice on the challenge. Couldn't you have been medevac on my season? Did he get medevac on the challenge? I think twice. So. I don't remember. Yeah. No, something like I think he got like he broke his shoulder. Oh yeah, he got hurt. Yeah, he was. And hurt. then he got oh, really yeah, sick. They said, they said he was like, on, and they did, wouldn't clear him to run the final. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I think he needed like pins in his shoulder or something. Like it was. Yeah, I forgot about that. Um, all right. Well, look, season thirty-five has been representing on the challenge. Yeah. People make. So I would final. do the challenge. I would do it once my kids graduate high school. Okay. If the right and, people yeah. are listening. And then I, I think I I don't know if I'd win, but I think yeah. I definitely would make it entertaining. Okay. All right. Well, let's talk about Survivor forty-five. Does it has that occurred to you yet that this has been now ten seasons since you played? Ten seasons. I know it's crazy. It's yeah. a long time. Round number. It it is. You know, it can I ask you a question, Rob? You can Do ask people ever ask you questions? Sometimes, um, but but not enough. Am I old school or new school? Because uh, I, think, I think you're not quite new school, but I I mean I, I think you're you're almost there at old school. I mean it's hard I'm for like me to old, say but during the new school. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what you're definitely like middle school now. <laughs> Maybe I'll graduate middle school one day. To me, I feel like that old school is probably still uh, prior to season twenty. And like, I feel like that's the cutoff for real for old uh -huh. school. Um, and then I kind of feel like maybe like you know twenty to thirty. I feel like you're right there. Thirty five. I feel like is a little new for old school. Right, but I was like the second oldest player on the season so it's like i feel well, old i don't think it, it doesn't school. like just because if you were like the oldest player on a newer season i don't think that changes anything if mind, you were yeah. if you were the youngest person on an old season it doesn't make you new school good point yeah but if you were the youngest person on an older season now you're old that's yes yes i, I wasn't the youngest person but one of the youngest people and now i'd be the oldest person on the season like it's crazy. Mm -hmm. All right. I I mean <laughs> I don't know where we're going. That was it, my first question for you. Okay. Yeah. Would you do the challenge? No. No, they don't need me on the challenge. You know, I've been thinking though, because you've never really done other reality shows. And I think there is one that I that you should do. Well, which one? I actually think that you should do dancing with Naked the stars. ambition? No. No, dancing with the stars. Yes. I think okay. they would get an entirely new audience. If you were on Dance with the Stars. Well, I've been turning them down for all these years, but if you think that I should do it, I mean, I'll consider it, Dr. Mike. I think you should do it. I don't yeah. know if they, they ask you, but they really should ask you. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's mm -hmm. let's talk some Survivor, and then I know you want to okay. talk about The Golden Bachelor and all sorts of other things. Um, but look, just give me your take. Uh, Survivor 45, uh, how do you feel about this season? It's an, first of all, I love this season. I think it is a great right. season of Survivor. I love it too. I, I think it has been tainted by people quitting. Mm -hmm. But the production, I mean, I don't know what... Watching the show is just enjoyable. And I feel like I don't know what to say that makes it that way. Like, why? Yeah. But watching the show is enjoyable. Yeah. Well, there's been more life at camp uh as somebody uh -huh. who has played has that meant anything to you to see more of what's going on back at the camps yeah i think it's fun i think it's nice watching it yeah what what do you think about the song there was a lot of like to do about like <laughs> the, the about, intro yeah the intro like in other words like everybody's like oh the intro's back the intro's back yeah. right are you fast forwarding the intro at this point we've watched it now like four times right <laughs> no. are, you, are, you, or are you still watching it like yeah the intro's back you know what? I, I feel like that. I, I don't fast forward it. Um, I, if anything, like, cause I, I feel like I'm not watching it like on Netflix where it's just easy to skip the intro. And so if I have to get, find the remote, by the time I find the remote, it's already over. I feel like, okay, this is, I can look at my phone. Um, I'm, I'm not staring at the screen during the intro, but I'm not skipping it. And do you like the 90 minute episode? I do. Yes. Is it going to stay 90 minute episode? Somebody said to me it's 90 That's minutes because really of the writer's question. strike. 
Yeah, I think it's going to be a 90-minute episode here in Survivor 45, and I think it's going to be a 90-minute episode for Survivor 46, but I don't know if that's set in stone that uh, in the future we will have more 90-minute episodes. Mm -hmm. I hope they do. Uh, I think it's been... The show has done very well. I think it's been like mm -hmm. basically the highest rated show on television. Uh, and now wow. not all of television is uh, back with new episodes, but it has been the number one show outside of football. So I think really? that they should... all of television. Yeah. That's uh, amazing. I think that they can point to, you know, um, that people are enjoying the 90 minute episodes. And I think that the producers like the 90 minute episodes. I can't imagine it costs them like, uh, that much more money to be making well, 90 minute episodes. They're already saving money because it's only 26 days. They're saving money from it being 26 days. And in terms of like, if CBS was going to green light some other like half hour show to be in there, it would be like, you know, tens of millions of dollars to make another show. So, and they get advertisers for their most popular show on television. Yeah. So it seems like it's a win win for everybody. I think that the amazing race doesn't necessarily like having 90 minute episodes. The like amazing yeah. race would rather have shorter episodes. And so you need another show to be 90 minutes uh, next to Survivor. I mean, maybe they can do like a live Jeff on Fire. Yes. Whatever that, sure. Whatever that podcast is. On Fire, the official Survivor podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, all right. So, Dr. Mike, that your season and this season do have some similarities. First off, uh, what do we have? Uh, well, can I ask you, hold on, before, before we go yes. there, can I just ask you about a, a question about that because I'm going to forget about this to the On Fire podcast? Yes. yes. I feel like I was listening to your podcast and I yes. saw it all over Twitter that about this advantage in the buff. Yes, Brando did, had an advantage. Did Jeff address that in no. the podcast? No, it did not come up on On Fire. I mean, because that, that like is mind-blowing that they didn't even let him see the advantage. Yeah, I had wondered that maybe, and, and there was, if anybody missed it, um, that Brando talked about how he, in his buff, that he uh, found something and then he went back to camp and then the producers took it away from him. I wonder if maybe Jeff was going to like announce that there was like, by the way, one of you has uh, something in your buff. And if you want to, you can use, uh, you know, use that advantage. Mm -hmm. Uh, although I, if they were going to do it that way, I wonder if they would have like, uh, somebody is going to have a, you know, purple buff, uh, and then that person, because it would be somebody, they would know it would be for that specific tribe. Um, uh -huh. I wonder if it was maybe like a clue to the idol at that tribe, um, because nobody had found it. Okay. I, I, I mean, don't know. I talked about that. Um, and I don't know, maybe, and maybe they just, maybe for whatever reason they wanted to, uh, decided not to do that or, uh, maybe here, oh, okay, here's my galaxy brain sort of thing. Um, I don't know. Uh, cause then yeah, those other guys had the idol. I don't know. Maybe they didn't want the idol to be found at that time. I mean, it's look, I, I mean, maybe I think probably it's just that they want to keep this as a surprise for season 46. Maybe. And just sort of use it in season 46. But at the same time, for the guy that got it and had it taken away, and then the, he gets voted out. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I mean, I can understand how wondering he is for the rest of his life. He's yeah, going to be like. on that paper. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's, I feel bad for him. Okay. Sorry. I, I skipped ahead. No, no problem. Uh, so I was going to say that, okay, so you played in season 35, uh, yeah. red versus yellow versus blue, uh, just like this season. And something else that your tr uh, season has in common with this is that I believe it's the only other season that started with three tribes and then swapped to three tribes. Oh, interesting. I didn't I realize. Also that. at the same point, right? You did three, uh, three people got voted out. Three people got voted out. And mm -hmm. you were an 18 person season. Uh, yep. Three people got voted out, and then you swapped to three tribes of five. I think that's the only other time in Survivor history that that's happened. Yeah, that's think I never even thought about that. That's yeah. funny. Okay, and so and now here we are at this point, and I think you all had three votes uh, in the tribes of uh, five, but you never went to a tribal council before the merge. I never went to tribal council, and I think I regret that every day i think about survivor yeah because 
you would have thrown a challenge and voted out Ben. Yes, I would have. Yes. I mean, I should have, right? But at the time, you're loving the fact that you just keep winning, right? It is so great to win. But as a, as a person, so, and this is the thing, is that now there's 90-minute episodes, so you can get to know the people that are winning, right? Yeah. Like, but for the people that, back in my day, when it's, 90, when it's 60 minute episodes, there's literally a minute and 40 seconds about my entire tribe on the television each week. And yeah. so then by the time you make the merge, nobody really knew who I was, right? Because I'd never been to tribal and like nobody meeting the fans, like the people that watch never really knew who I was because I'd never been to tribal and they got to see me as like the nerdy guy that Joe picked on, you know? Yeah. Are you surprised that none of the tribes in this season were thinking about throwing a challenge? I I am, but I think they're they're just worried because I think in a faster season, you don't know when the merge is going to happen. You don't know when the swap is going to happen. You don't know. Like it looks like the merge is next week, and yeah. there's and they've only voted out one extra. Per how many people? Are, how many people are there since tribe swap? How many people? I'm sorry. Have gone home since the tribe oh, swap. Yeah, two. So on my season, it was three. Yes. So like, you don't necessarily want to kick one of your strong people out. Like, like if you kick Sifu out, you're then gonna. You don't know when you're gonna merge. Yeah. You know. Okay. Well, let's it's, talk about this merge a little bit. Uh, that's coming up. Uh, okay. Dan Sinensky has a question for you. As a healer. What does Dr. Mike think of Bello and especially Reba holding the numbers pre-mergatory? Which group is in more trouble? Okay, so you and your tribe uh, were uh, pretty uh, dominating uh, in the early going. And uh, you went into the merge with five. And then you ultimately, uh, only Rourke went out before you got to the merge. And then... All of a sudden, you have five, and then these other tribes started picking on you guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I think, and so the, I don't know the names of all the tribes. It's very confusing. You could me. call them red, yellow, and blue. So red is the one that still has five people, right? Red still, well, so new red is down to four people, but they have no, but all, the old their, original, they original. Have all their original people. Yeah. And it's been so four people have been gone from the original Lulu tribe, the original yellow tribe, and one person is now gone from the original blue tribe. Okay. So it's when they merge, it's going to be basically seven to six. Seven, seven with, uh, basically with now with Emily joining with the people from the original red tribe. Okay. Oh, so you're saying Emily is going to join the red people. I don't know. So Emily's going to be the wild card again. That's funny. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, on my season, basically, so I think that this season is going to be different. One, because I'll tell you why. In a, in a much faster paced, more dangerous game, tribal alliances don't mean anything. Yeah. And so, no. So the reality is, is that in my season, there was a domineering factor of Ben and Christy that stood there and said, okay, you guys are not allowed to talk to any of these other people. And people listened, right? Like the entire they, they, yellow. They said, that, they said that to the other people that weren't in the healers. Right. That weren't in the healers. They said, yeah. you're not allowed to talk to the healers. Yeah. And everybody listened. And so, but I don't think in this new era of Survivor, yeah. that that's going to happen. Okay, I just so don't. Can you refresh my memory? So when did you all merge? Like day 19? Does that sound right? Yeah, like day, we merged like day 19, and we merged with five healers. I want to say yeah. four healers. And, or, uh, so uh, yeah, you, you all had five, and then uh, what was it? Three three heroes and uh, three hustlers and, and four heroes? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but this is day 10. Like, uh, you, uh, you know, had these bonds with these people. You probably hadn't even, you been, you might have only swapped on day 10. Right. That's exactly when we swapped. Uh huh. Yeah. Like, it, it, that's the whole thing is that, like, it's such a, a different, like, the exceeding, the in, like, interminable boredom of being on Survivor 
of, of being hungry and tired with no roof and no ceiling and wet and not having sex. Like, mm. it, yeah. it, it, like, well, I say that because, Rob, I, I, could you sit in a, on a beach with Nicole, who is probably the person you love most in your entire life, for more than a day without getting into a fight? Oh, <laughs> that was not where I thought you were going. Um, yeah, uh, could we be on the on the beach for a day without getting in a fight? I would say probably not. Right. So I don't think you can be in a fight. And then they purposely do these psychological evaluations to put you on the beach with somebody that with people that you're not going to get along with, mm -hmm. that, that are going to argue with you. And then they make you hungry and cold and tired and wet. And it's like, okay, go at it. And so those days, those off days where there's no challenge and you're not eating is when, I mean, it's boring and that's when you all fight. And that's okay. when you all like want to kill each other. So, and so are, are you saying that Survivor is easier now because there are less of those days where you do nothing? I think it is more strategic. You see strategy. So like it's more easy to follow the strategy because you, if I were to come up with a plan on day 10 or like, you know, post-merge, so day 19, now it's day 22 and we're trying to implement that plan. There have been 27 other plans. Like nobody wants that same plan that he had on day 19. But here in a, in a faster paced season, there's no time to really perseverate about the plan, mentally masturbate about it. You just go with the plan. Okay, that's a good plan. Let's just do it. You know, or maybe you'll have one more iteration of the plan. It, there's no 27 just, iterations. Just go. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. So do you feel like that it's going to uh, be any more complicated than just original red versus blue because these people maybe aren't as tightly bonded as maybe some other past survivor tribes have been going into a merge. Yes, I do. Because you don't have those boring off days where you really feel like you know each other. You're, I mean, my tribe was cuddling. I wasn't cuddling, but my tribe was cuddling on the beach for 10 days. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah, like the people you cuddle with, you're not going to them betray, you know, mm -hmm. they, I, yeah. it was like, they would all sleep there and I would sleep like three feet away. <laughs> uh, I'm just trying to think back to these last couple seasons. And I do feel like the beginning part of the merge, I feel like the people are still pretty tribe loyal, but you spend more time like in the merge than you did with your original tribe. And I think that that stuff does kind of fall by the wayside after a couple of days. Absolutely. And I think these are more gamers. I mean, yeah. so like whether people like, I think one of the biggest complaints about Survivor these days is that there aren't any mean people out there. There aren't like they're not casting the Joe Menas, who is not necessarily a mean guy, but he was acting like a mean guy out there, right? Like they're not casting the jerks. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, they're not like once you do swap, once you do merge, people are more likely to work with each other because they find common bonds with each other. And they at the end of the day, they know it's a game, you know? Yeah. And like, if you're not rec taking recruits and everybody knows it's a game, then you act like it's a game. Okay. Dr. Mike, we saw this week where Brando reached out to Drew uh, and said, Hey, why don't we make a nerd alliance and we can work together? And we saw that uh, Drew said, No, no, why would I, why would I want to do that? I would not want to work with a nerd alliance and somebody that was from Bello. You're not part of my plan. Were you surprised that Drew handled it that way? Yeah, I mean, I think, do you think of Drew and what's the other guy? And Brando. No, what's, what's Drew's Austin. partner? Name? Austin. Drew and Austin. Don't you think of them as like, uh, as like Stephen Fishback and. They uh, said it themselves on the show. JT. Yeah, I mean, and JT, like, I see them as such a good group, like duo but i don't know why drew didn't just say yes like we've always learned on every podcast you just say yes if somebody asks you to be an alliance just say yes but what's his advantage of voting out brando versus the girl that's not in the nerd alliance with him kendra yeah well i think that emily had a tie to kendra so there was uh some deleted scenes from the first episode where kendra got to go to the first tribal council and i think that kendra 
had hit it off mm -hmm. uh, with Emily to some degree. And so and because Emily and Kendra had like a little bit of a relationship, I think it was probably easier to keep Emily on board uh, if Emily was closer with Kendra than Brando. Can, can we talk about Emily for one second? Of course. So the one thing I'll say about Emily and is that, you know, I, I know on the podcast you've talked about the evolution of Emily, right? From being mm -hmm. like this, like whatever she was yeah. to being what she is now. But what I caught both times I watched the episode this last week, which I thought was so interesting is the first episode, they talk about aliens, yes. right? Yes. And she's like, what the hell? Like, I have nothing in common with these people talking about aliens. Yeah. And in this episode, and you might have brought this up already, they brought up aliens again. Yeah. And they she's said, full we on. The alliance, the aliens. And, and, and what did she say? She's full in the alien alliance. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, aliens. That's good. So, like, her evolution is, like, she has definitely evolved as, like, this player that like now likes aliens yeah but what about you dr mike that yeah a lot of people look up to you very educated uh intellectual person what do you think about the aliens and the pyramids well here's my thought on aliens in all seriousness and i rob i figured you would ask me this question yeah i i mean do you believe in aliens of course yeah yeah so here's the thing is that in a world where humans have existed for, and I looked this up, hold on, I'll tell you. Humans have existed on this world for 6 million years, right? Yeah. But the earth is 4.5 billion years old and the universe is 13.8 billion years old, right? Mm -hmm. So if the universe is 13 billion years old and literally we've made so much advancement, not in the 6 million years, but in the last 5,000 years, right? Yeah. And we've only been there for 6 million years. So what it stands to reason is that about 3 billion years ago and about 10 billion years ago, life started forming on some other planet, just like on our planet, and they're billions of years ahead of us. So like, or a billion years, or a million years ahead of us. So in this sort of universe where there's an indefinite amount of planets, so some of them must be inhabit inhabitable, there must be life that is much less sophisticated than us, and there must be life that is much more sophisticated than us. And just like we look for other life, I think these people that are more sophisticated are these aliens have are looking at us. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if they're here. I don't know if they're interacting with us. I don't know. I mean, I've even heard that literally we destroyed Mars and Adam and Eve are actually the Martians. And now they started humanity. And wow. they're really we're all aliens. I mean, it's uh, interesting, right? That is interesting. I, yeah, I had not like, heard that one before. I, I I think that they're aliens. I think they're probably watching. So I don't know if they're listening to the podcast. That would be pretty cool. Wouldn't it be What's amazing up? if they were listening to all the podcasts? <laughs> if that was like their favorite method to communicate and then and then they wanted to come here and they were like, Bring us bring us Rob Sesternino. He's yeah. made the most podcasts. Rob Sestanino in space. You can that be like, how we do you live from my spaceship? <laughs> yeah. It's Rob. We're very interested in this show called Survivor, and there's no human <laughs> who has spent more hours talking about it. We've yeah. listened to it all. There's Boston Rob and there's Space Rob. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And that's how, that's how they want it. They, they only can communicate through Survivor because Survivor really is, you know, about, you know, adapting and fitting mm -hmm. in and so that that's how they've been studying about like when they come to the earth like how are they going to adapt and merge with our society they're definitely not watching naked and afraid <laughs> <laughs> well that might help with anatomy but they blur a lot of stuff <laughs> yeah and they're i mean they might be watching the bachelor i hope they're watching the golden bachelor the golden bachelor <laughs> right. yes but now, I, I saw you had said on Twitter that you watched The Golden Bachelor. Now, why the Golden Bachelor? Do, you, do but, you watch The Regular Bachelor? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, The Bachelor is like The Bachelor Pad. I, the, do you remember Bachelor The Bachelor Pad? Pad? Yes. But do you remember Bachelor Pad? Yeah, uh, vaguely. That was some of the best television ever. Yes. And then they changed it to the beach. I mean, Bachelor Pad 
one of the craziest, like if you remember, it was like you had to have a couple, you competed for $250,000, and at the very end, you had to pick if, you know, the, the couple gets $250,000 to split. But if the boy says he wants it all by himself, and the girl says she wants it all by himself, neither one gets it. Yeah. If the boy says I want it all by himself, and the girl says I want to split it. Prisoner's dilemma. Yeah, the boy gets it all. Yeah. If they say they both want to share it, they both get 125. Okay. And live on television, like live in the like after the final bachelor, impar- like bachelor pad. Yeah, yeah. They presented this, and the girl said we'll split it, and the guy said I'm taking it all, and they gave him 250 thousand dollars. I've never seen somebody so upset on live. Like Great. she was so mad. It, it wasn't was Johnny Bananas, was it? I don't think he was on Bachelor. Okay. Was it? No. Are but you I watching the villains? I, I watched the first episode. We have podcast coverage. I've been trying to keep up with the podcast from Jenny and Chappelle, but I have uh, your old friend Jenny. Oh, I, I love Jenny. Yes, she's great. But I no, I have not been key. I haven't kept up with the last couple episodes. Do you like it? I haven't watched. I have, who has time? I don't have time. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, you. I want to watch it. You are telling me about the Golden Bachelor. I, I'm like four episodes behind. I mean, I watched the first two episodes. It's like okay. literally the only show I watch right now is Survivor. It's, okay. I, I don't have time to watch anything else. All right. Well, let's talk about something. Okay. So I, I'm glad you're here because. Oh, and um, the challenge. I did watch Jay on the challenge last week and that was good. Oh, the new challenge. Challenge 39. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm not a challenge fan. Yeah. At least one reality show is 39 something. Am I right? What? What? I missed it. Yeah. Survivor used to be 39 something. Oh, 39 days. Yeah. Yes. I get it yeah. now. Yeah. Okay. All right. But, okay. So <laughs> Did you see, who was here. the one that said, I'm going to be 30 fun? Kendra? Was that her? Yes. Yes. She's 30. That was a great line. I'm going to be 30 fun. I'm going to use that when I turn 50 fun. Okay, when you turn 50 fun. Um, her, she also, uh, she was very fun in this episode. Uh, she said her motto is whatever, man. That's her motto. What's your motto, Dr. Mike? I think my motto is, in all seriousness, it's uh, if not me, who? If not now, when? Hmm. It's pretty good. Yeah. I mean. If not me, uh, who? If not now, when? Right. We can do it the other way. If not now, when? If not me, who? But I feel like, I mean, I, I do, like, that's my motto, right? It's like at work, at home. It's not it's not such a fun motto. I used to probably have a much more fun motto. Mm-hmm. But, Rob, who would ever eat a worm without biting it first? Like, haven't you heard of these worms that swim around in your body the rest of your life? Okay, tell me about this. So did you, you or anybody on the Healers Tribe eat a worm? Cole ate a worm. Okay, and what happened to him? And I still remember it. I mean, it's so gross. I, yes. Nothing happened to him. It's not like you eat one worm and you're like, oh my God, that was so satisfying. I'm so mm-hmm. full now. I have so much protein. <laughs> it's like, no. It's not worth it to eat the worm. So tell me, how did Cole take in the worm? He chewed it up. He chewed it up. And then yeah. um, was just like, and did he like it? I don't think he liked it. He just ate it. It was like cold. Yeah. That's so what cold che- up. Yeah. He, cho- he chewed it and that was, you thought that was the right way to go. Definitely. You can't full on shot a worm. That's like, it's going to like, I mean, I don't know medically if it's actually going to swim around in your guts and like live there for the rest of its life or your life. But like, that's, I legit would be worried about that. Yeah. If I swallowed a worm for the rest of my life. So a survivor that you... Bob, seriously, if I said to you, I'll give you a million dollars to eat a live worm without swallowing it, would you do that? I mean, how long is the worm? Like like a 10 incher? Six inches. Oh, Dr. Mike, that's, uh, you know, uh, private. But it might live in you for the rest of your life, swimming around in your in your, in your intestines. Mm, I, th- I mean, you're the doctor. If you tell me that that's going to happen, but on I'll say on my season of Survivor that we had a gross food challenge, that we were eating like bugs. Uh, like uh-huh. I, I don't even know that they were saying like, oh, these are delicacies. Um, and the guy who won, Matthew, it was like it was like a millipede. It was like um, 
it, it was about like uh, like a cigarette lighter, like uh, okay. basically. And he just like put it in his mouth and just like swallowed it whole. That's crazy. He's still That's alive. But it's, where's the worm? Where's the millipede? I don't know. Wait, I don't know. <laughs> was he checking his stool afterwards for the millipede? I don't. He didn't mention that to me. I forgot to ask him. Yeah, I mean, was he the guy that sharpened the knife? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. For people going on Survivor, according to Rob, one of the strategies could be to just sharpen the machete every night, yeah. and that scares people, and they won't vote you out. Okay. Well, actually, you know what, Dr. Mike, <laughs> since we're here, we're talking about my season of Survivor, then, okay, let's, let's bring in a question for Taylor Cotter. Has a question, actually, going back to my season of Survivor. Here's Taylor. Hi, Rob. This is Taylor Cotter calling. Um, I haven't heard you talk about this yet, so I wanted to send this in. Uh, this week, Caleb working with Bruce uh, gave me vibes of a young Rob C. working with Roger on the men's tribe um, and really understanding that uh, being subservient to this person that sees them as the leader uh, may have uh, positive results down the line. So wondered if you uh, saw any of yourself and Caleb and how, uh, how you think that might play out. Uh, Looking forward to hearing from you. Yes. Thanks, Rob. Very nice to hear from Taylor, a uh, longtime listener and contributor to the show. So happy to hear uh, that she's doing well. I, I hope she's doing well. She's calling in. She didn't get, get into she... too much details of how she's doing. <laughs> I hope she's doing well. Too. Yeah, I hope so, too. Seems very nice. Yeah, it seems very nice. Anyway, so uh, Dr. Mike, back in Survivor of the Amazon, that, you know, I, I was very happy to take on the role of, uh, like, hey, whatever people are going to tell me to do in this tribe, I'm happy to do it so I don't get voted out. Because I noticed that the people that they wanted to vote out were the guys that were not listening to the orders uh, from the leaders of the tribe, uh, the late, great Roger Sexton, who, uh, you know, had passed away in the last year. Um, but um, I, th I had, I made a little bit of a comparison. I did see that. I, I think I mentioned it maybe on the know-it-alls with Steven, but uh, Malcolm was another one that, you know, uh, with Russell Swan, Dr. Mike, did you, uh, see, were, were you somebody who was like uh, going along with, what people wanted uh, in the tribe, uh, or were you giving orders to anybody? I don't think I gave orders to anybody, but mm -hmm. I just did what needed to be done. Honestly, like if I, not you, I, who exactly? If exactly. Not now, if not well, then, when? Right. I mean, that's the whole thing. Is that if you? I mean, on my tribe, after like 30 days or after like 25 days, there were so many people that literally just laid all the time. People would say like, Mike, why didn't you fish more? It's like, it's hard to fish when everybody is just laying right. and then you go and you get fish and they're like, okay, you're feeding me too? It's like, well, like you just mm -hmm. lay all the time. Like yeah. you say you don't even have enough energy to play checkers. Like it's like, it's, yes. it was hard. And so. Yes. Yeah, we were. I was just. I just did everything. I don't know. It's because people asked, or just because I did it. Yeah. You know. Well, first off, right. I, that you know, there's nothing to do. So I am not gonna just like sit still. Like there's if there's stuff to do around the camp. Like I'm gonna like be be doing it. And you know, if there's somebody who is like give is being bossy and like giving direction and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm probably going to be somebody who's going to, you know, go along with that to curry favor. And, you know, if somebody is putting themselves as the leader of the tribe, yeah, what does it hurt to go? If he says, go get the coconuts, wh uh, right. why not? And I thought that Caleb handled that so well. What do you think about uh, Caleb in terms of how he's fitting in with that tribe? Well, well let me ask you this. Do you, I think, I mean, first of all, I think Caleb's amazing, right? Like, yeah, like everything preseason during the season now like it just seems like caleb is i don't want to say heads and tails above everybody else strategically but like caleb is literally getting like this super winner edit of like i am this i mean do you see that or like have you talked about that already like we haven't gotten just, into too much of the edit i think he's he's certainly gotten a lot in the in he's this like season, yeah, the golden boy not, he, you know uh I, I would not quite say that i feel like that he is uh 
he must be the winner. But it, it is like uh, oh, I don't uh, think it, he's gonna win. Yeah, I don't think he's gonna win. But I think he's getting this amazing. I think he's gonna like. I was thinking about it. I think he's gonna get like the Vic Devin Dennett of like this guy had winning stolen from him. You know. Yeah. But like he just had this amazing game up until boom. You know. Right, and he gets he gets close, but isn't that guy? But right. he's done notice, so well. notice, I said the Rick Devin, not the Doctor Mike. I got it. I got yes. it. It hurts. Yes, <laughs> yes. You can get you can get right there. Right, like the David Wright at it. You know, like it's sort of this. They call that the Fallen Angel, Doctor Mike. The Fallen Angel. I think that's I, I. That's what I'm worried about him for. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so, but he's he's been very good. Um, he's been great. I mean, okay. and he's so enjoyable to watch. I mean, literally, yeah. he is, he's just fun to watch. It's like, he has this, like, natural charisma that literally bounces off the screen. Dr. Mike, let me ask you a question about somebody else uh, who has a uh, similar edit to somebody. Uh, or Ryan Patterson wants to know, hey, Robin, Dr. Mike, does Dr. Mike see any similarities between Austin and Devin Pinto? No. Okay. I mean, besides them having long hair... Absolutely not. Yes. I mean, what do you see as the differences then? I think Austin has had a strategic... Like, I think Austin and Drew are playing a great name game. I think Austin is playing an amazing game. He had all of these... He has so many advantages. I can't keep up with them. You know? Could Austin and Drew be the new Devin Pinto and Ryan Ulrich? I take offense at that because <laughs> I thought because, because up until I was voted out, I thought it was Devin Pento and Dr. Mike. <laughs> okay. But they were together from the beginning. They were together from the beginning. On and a they red were, tribe. On a red tribe. But honestly, they were fighting from day 20 to day 37. Mm -hmm. They literally didn't really talk to each other for the entire merge. Yeah. Like, and so... And that's where, like, sort of the edit comes in until, like, that, like, so what, it is, what, what, it what is. were they beefing about? Devin, uh, Whether Eli Manning I love is Devin. A I, no, like, Devin was very, Devin, like, Devin, I mean, nobody wants to hear about my season, but Devin no, was I, very I, I big. I want to hear about it. Into, he was very big into honesty, and yeah. you have to be honest with him, and you better not let anybody know, like, I am going to flip on you no matter what if you are not honest with me about anything. And Ryan didn't tell him about the idol that he had. And he felt that was the betray like that he got on like a like after the spaghetti thing. And he felt like that was a betrayal of trust. And he never talked to him again. Literally for like until day 36 or 37. Yeah. Like until like day 36, maybe until and they won this like what's that? And he voted for him. On his way out, he promised Ryan that he was going to vote for him, no matter what. Yeah. And and that I mean, and I, I mean, it's complicated, but like, and the whole reason why I changed my vote from Devin to, I mean, we've talked about this, but the whole reason I changed my vote from Devin to Ben at Final Five, which, what clearly we didn't know about fire making. So, yeah. but the whole reason was because I thought we had followed Ben all day. There was no way he could have an idol. If we go back to the finals, if we go back as final four, every single person out there is putting me in their final three. But if I vote for Devin and Ben goes home, which makes sense because there's no way Ben can have an idol again. Yeah. I, ben, Devin's going to turn on me and he's going to make all of them turn on me because I, voted for him yeah. and so i literally changed my vote at final five and that's why i wasn't making fire or wasn't in the final three okay so so because okay. devin wrote your name down even though he's devin wrote my name. honesty and has to tell and everybody has to tell him what's going on he he was not necessarily up front i know it's gonna sound crazy doing. but i told him that probably that I was going to write his name down and that he should probably write my name down. Oh. And he said, and he said, so Devin and I would have a strategy meeting every day. Yeah. Every day we would have a strategy meeting for two weeks, but we would like sneak off, 
sit next to the well and have a strategy meeting, basically. Yeah. And I and we, I, I was saying to him, I'm like, look, Ben has to. We have to take control away from Ben in this game. The way we're going to do that is not let Ben, not all of us voting for Ben, and shame on me for not saying let's just vote for Ryan, because everybody would have voted for Ryan. Right. And then it would have been Ben, Chrissy, Devin, and I. But everybody wanted to take Ryan to the to the final three. And so, I mean, everybody wanted to take Ryan and Chrissy realistically to the final three. And so we just, like, what I had told Devin, though, was, look, you vote for me, I'm voting for you. And that way it's not Ben that determines it. And he was like, I am not voting for him. There's no way I'm voting for him. We won't even talk about that. I hate Ben. I'm voting for Ben. Yeah. And you talked like, him into voting you out? It sounds so dumb. I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I still worry about it six years later, but I get to do podcasts with you. Yeah, Ben gets to go on his television shows, mm -hmm. and and I, everybody's happy. Everybody's so it all happy. works out. It all works out. Yeah, but you know, Nito seems like he's doing great. Yeah, I think so. He's married. He has a kid. His baby, right, and right. So what would I think he's in though? the Coast Guard. Okay, so hypothetical, so, who's in the Coast Guard? Devin I think Pinto. Devin joined the Coast Guard. Yeah. Wow. Um, okay, well, maybe he should have been a hero and not a hustler. Good point. Yeah. Um, but so uh, can I just talk it through? Because this is fun. So, all right. So if you would have written Devin's name down. Okay, so Ben, he plays his idol. Ben Bob. Yep. Okay, uh, all the votes for Ben are canceled. So now instead of a one, one by one vote, Dr. Mike gets voted out. Now it's one vote for one vote for Devin Pinto one vote for Dr. Mike. Okay. And now what do we do here? Okay. Now everybody will read. Well, ben, ben voted for Devin also. So Devin goes home. Oh, you got voted out on a revote? I got voted out on the only five person revote in survivor history. Yes. Okay. All right. So, cause, cause, uh, that, all right. So the Devin Pinto would have gone home because everybody ben. else thought, Oh, Devin has a better chance of beating Ben in the final four challenge. Than Dr. Mike, even though Dr. Mike had never lost to Ben in anything and Ben had never won anything. Yeah. I know, it's so sad. Mm -hmm. And so, but then playing that out, Devin goes home. Instead of Devin being the strategic mastermind and me being this goofball that goes out of Final Five, I'm now a strategic mastermind because of the Survivor edit. But besides that, now at Final Four, that challenge which is literally like me working on a robot either i win it and i end right. up in final and i end and up in you, final uh, a literal three. surgeon you would be like no problem moving those things around and so either i win it and i'm in final three and then i lose to ben because he makes fire against somebody and then i lose to him mm -hmm. or i i don't win it and now i'm making fire against ben and the reality is is that in my dreams, I would have won. I mean, I practiced fire. I was really good at making fire. But was Ben better? Yeah, of course Ben was better. He was Ben. I mean, yeah. he, made, he made fire to save his life in the woods, in the Marines. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's like, I mean, what who's going to lose? Right. Yeah. So, like, okay. I mean, so you sleep, so you sleep I would have lost anyway. Night. Yeah, you would have lost anyway. So you would have yeah. made it another day. And then, um, or best case scenario, you get to the end and probably... Still, uh, probably Ben wins, wins the jury vote. Exactly, exactly. Okay. I mean, Joe had made it very clear that if Ben makes it to the end, he's going to win. He went to Ponderosa and he told everybody Ben's going to win. Even your, I, buddy, your buddy, the Coco Nut, Joe, Joe wouldn't vote for you. I, I don't know. So I mean, look, you get to Ponderosa and Joe, Desi, Cole, Lauren, all of them are like, Mike, if you had just made it, we would have voted for you. But would they have? Yeah. They're still playing survival. <laughs> you know, so I mean, at the end of the day, like Ben has a great story. I'm glad Ben got the money. Ben is, you know, he's living a totally different life than he would have been living if he didn't have the money. Yeah. You know, so yeah. Well, thank, I, I, thank you, thank you for going going over all that. I know it's not easy to uh, go through it, but you know, it is you know really interesting to get to hear these stories from the players. I mean, I would love to one day go back and win. Yeah. And who, to think that I, what's that? Who wouldn't? Right. And to think that I don't think every day about how I would play it 
to make myself a relevant player pre-merge to, you know, like to spice up the game, to make the game entertaining for the, like, I think I would have a, like, it would be a lot of fun. I don't know if I would actually win, but I think I would have a lot more fun out there on a second try than a, that's what I said. You gotta play the second time, or uh, play the first time like it's your second time. I know. Yeah. I know. Oh, it's so sad. <laughs> it's not sad. It's not sad because uh, you went out there and you had uh, a great adventure. You played what thirty-seven days, a feat that uh, no f future Survivor player can even dream of. Oh, well, that's true. Yeah. You, uh, you know, you, you had an wow. amazing adventure. You gambled. You threw the idol in the fire. You gave us great moments. And, you know, you have, like, a wonderful success outside of Survivor. It's not oh, like shit. that you, like, uh, will, like, uh, you know, not sleep at night. Like, I can't feed my family because I blew it on Survivor. Oh, I want to hug you right now. Oh, yeah. thank you. And, and, and yeah, uh, and stories for the rest of your life, Dr. Mike. Stories for the rest of your life. Yeah. Cool. Before we talk about throwing an idol in the fire. Yes. All right. Can we talk about Ponderosa, though? Of course. Can we go back to that guy, Sean, and him quitting? Okay. Because he's quitting. He's like, I can't spend a second away from my family. Yes. Anymore. But then doesn't the guy just go and sit at Ponderosa? Yeah, you know, I don't know exactly how it works now. So, like, back forever, it was basically from Survivor, like, 3 to Survivor 39, uh, with the exception of the Edge of Extinction, that the survivors, the, the people who got voted out in the first half went on, like, they sent them, like, on a trip, and they would go around the world and then basically everybody would come home around the same time i don't exactly know what they do in the new era i think they go home like a little bit earlier than like maybe they send the pre-mergers home when the new people are coming to uh the uh ponderosa so i don't know I, I you don't know about you don't know about that or you don't know if that's what they do i don't know if that's what they do or maybe they go somewhere else i i, I, I don't think that they all go home the same day Okay, because it just made no sense to me. I mean, yeah. knowing that Ponderosa exists. I'm sure we can find made... out. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'm sure we can find out too. But aren't you curious about that? Did you think, have you guys talked about that already on these podcasts? I mean, no, we've, uh, that, that point has been made. Obviously, he doesn't okay. get to go home. Like, it's not like they're like, all right, well, you know, we'll send you back on the airplane. Uh, unless, like, he, like, threw, like, the, like, the biggest tantrum ever. Uh -huh. And then so they, you know. Yeah, so let me ask you this, though, going back to that moment then, because I think that was like, I was so impressed with the girls on Survivor. Like, Rob, what would you have done if you were Sifu? How do you get these three girls to crack? They're all just sitting there, and you talked about, like, a prisoner's dilemma, right? Like, what do you do when there are three girls, and you know one's lying? Like, if you were D, shouldn't you have started yelling at Sifu for voting for you? Because there was a vote for D. Mm -hmm. And so, if, you know... Like, I don't, what would you have done to get them to crack? Well, the problem is, you know, um, I think if you're D, you kind of just want Sifu to stop talking about this because you're also very guilty. So, <laughs> that it, like, you're not very guilty, you are guilty. You are guilty. <laughs> but yeah. somebody voted for her too. And somebody voted for her too. So maybe she should have been more like, uh, like if she's the one, like, uh, I need to know who wrote my damn name down. Uh, but shouldn't you have been like, of course he said that to you. You're just trying to make up for the fact that you voted for me mm -hmm. and he voted for, he voted for you, but you voted for me and you're trying to cover yourself. Yeah. Sort of gaslight Sifu. I, I just don't think she wanted to wind him up more. Like, I think that, <laughs> um, to call like, like, I think that maybe she's hoping they just like, let it go and not. And like, she's just like, Oh, I'm so mad about it. I don't want to talk about it. Like I think I think that just like pouring more gas on the fire maybe isn't the way out. I mean, so how would you have how would you have approached those girls if to I try to figure you? out? No, if you were Sifu, like what would you have done to try to get those three girls like? Um, the I, I don't know. I think that he that obviously his his approach was I'm going to make a fake idol and sort of like uh, tell them like, hey, don't write my name down because I've got an idol, so that that'd be a big mistake. Um, 
it's we don't really don't know what where his like relationship is like i don't know if he's trying to say like like if he's going to them and say like i know it's jay maya let's just vote her out she's we can't trust jay maya she's not good in the challenges so i i, I don't know it didn't seem like he was throwing out any of their names i guess um which might maybe is smart because then he doesn't know what the alliances are right that's true i guess yeah okay but I, I, we really, we have no idea, like, who Sifu trusts, who he doesn't trust, what he's, does he feel like, hey, I'm in with the guys at, at the Red Tribe, or that he wanted to vote out Sean, and that's really all we know. Yeah, what's the Sifu archetype? I mean, you talk about, like, archetype is Austin, like, Devin, like, who's Sifu? Like, I can only come up with, like, Coach. Yeah, Coach, uh, he's almost like Coach crossed with Tony, I think is uh, what we're, you know, coming up with. Okay. You know, he's a big yeah. personality. He's like trying to make big moves, but he's also like a little erratic so far. Uh huh. Okay. Dr. Mike, I have some questions here for you. And I'm so happy that we have a honest to goodness doctor here. And maybe you could weigh in on something that uh, not many people are, you know, able to do on a podcast. But we had this situation going on with Jake here in this episode where for the second time we've seen Jake have these episodes and Tommy Guam uh, wants to know, what does Dr. Mike think about Jake and his fainting? Do you think that this could be a medevac? So based, uh, obviously you're not there, you're not examining him, but based on what you're seeing on the show, do you have any sense of what's going on with Jake? I mean, I think Jake is having, you know, I think uh, the ICU nurse nailed it where she said he's having like what's called orthostatic hypotension. But basically he's getting hot, he's standing up, he's getting dizzy, and he's falling down. Yeah. In, in that situation, what you got to do is you got to lie him down, lift up the leg. If you remember, the same thing happened to Cole. Yeah. Remember Cole went, why, 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 why did you do that? Yeah, yeah. I think I have uh, that clip. Yeah, do we have that clip still? Uh, let's see. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Mike in, in the field. How did you do, 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 do you do that? Yes. That was yeah. a similar situation. Yeah, exact same thing happened. He stood up and he got lightheaded and fell down. But you can't have him then sit down. You got to have him lay down and put the legs up. And with that, Dr. Joe, I think there's no more. Is Dr. Joe still on Survivor? I don't think so. So mm -hmm. Dr. Joe didn't even come out that time for us, right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I'm a doctor. Uh, we had Jessica who was a nurse practitioner. We took care of him and he got better. So I'm curious. Healers. Yeah. I mean, I'm curious if he, uh, if this was even not just a medevac situation, but if they even had a doctor come out and check him out. Okay. Because now, this still we've seen this happen and we didn't see any, any doctors uh, come out there, but the fact that we've seen this happen twice based on, you know, uh, what you've seen on the show, the, do you feel like that, is this likely to keep happening because it happened uh, already twice before? So you're saying, are they trying to point a theme? Like no, I, I'm asking you in your in in your uh, you know uh, you know. Sure, I mean, I think the guy needs to drink more water, yeah. right? I think he needs to drink more water. I don't think he's gonna drown. I don't think he's gonna die. I don't think he's gonna fall into a fire. Yeah, he just has to be careful and drink a lot of water. Okay. So, and you feel like that based off of what you're seeing, you feel like if he was uh, going to like get better at hydrating, that you feel like that uh, he should, you know, be out of the woods with this. Yes, I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Did you? Yeah, no, never mind. Okay. Do you I mean, feel I, like that based off of like the backstory that we got because that he has had, you know, a, a big weight loss in the past. Do you feel like, is he, d does that in any way make him more likely to have, you know, issues with coming out and playing survivor uh, very shortly after that? I don't think so. But did you notice that like somebody said something like sort of vulgar to him before he got up? No, you know what? Honestly, that, so that there was, uh, I'm glad you, you brought that up because that. It, it, and I couldn't that, figure out who it was. No, it was that. So that a lot of people thought it was Bruce, but it's Jake is talking. He's laying down and he's like, Jake, get your, J Jake, get your fat ass up. Like he's talking. So Jake said it himself. Jake said it. And him, I was trying to, to look. I went back and rewound because it didn't sound like Bruce. It didn't sound like Caleb. 
neither one of their mouths are moving, and I couldn't really see. People thought it was Jake's Bruce, mouth. and we're sending a lot right. of like rude messages to Bruce. How dare you? But it was, and Jake said, "Listen, I was talking. That was me talking <laughs> to, my, to myself." Right. And then it goes into this thing, and you're like, "Oh my gosh!" Like, He's like, "Yeah, <laughs> Bruce really put his foot in his mouth before he." Right. Like, uh, but, I can't believe he said that. Yeah. Yeah, but clearly, either way, even if it was Bruce, he was just joking. Right? It wasn't like. I mean, was, he, well, he looks so good out there that, like, you know, like, there's there's no reason to even think that he had a weight problem ever, you know? Yeah. But it, but I think body, you know, I see a lot of body dysmorphia in men, right? So, like, women, we know they, they can have body dysmorphia in terms of bulimia, in terms of anorexia. Men have it as well. It typically focuses around their genitals, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And so I see a lot of it. But... It's a, like weight issues, like appeal issues are real, are real, real issues. And mm -hmm. so I, I love the fact that it was sort of highlighted on television. I think it was a, you know, it was really interesting to watch and to listen to. Yeah. Dr. Mike, um, let's see. Uh, I, I want to make sure there's another question about that. Um, so Bobby Hall says, uh, we saw Jake's first medical moment and dear him to Kendra. How, if at all, did uh, the moment of Kelly stepping up and being uh, uh, and Jake being cared for affect the dynamic of the tribe? So did that in any way when you had to tend to cold, did that change the uh, nature of how the alliances were? I know you were working with Cole and Jessica, but when you had to then treat him, did that endear you to uh, him anymore after that? If anything, I think it bonded Jessica and I more. Okay. Because we were both the caregivers the for him. Yeah. And we realized how well we worked together. Like, it was like, we just did everything together. Like, we did it. We're taking care of this guy. And we saw, like, how close-knit we were. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Now, Dr. Mike, uh, I saw that you also... Uh, found the idol uh and shared you shared that information with with cole and jessica right is that right no the only one that knew was jessica because yes. she was with me and i didn't know if she would have seen me put it in my pocket so i told her i remember that second like i pull it out of the ground i'm so happy and she's there she's like two feet away but looking the wrong direction and i was like if i put it in my pocket and she notices she's gonna go crazy Mm -hmm. So I just told her, but then she went home. So nobody knew I had the idol, but they all would always say, Dr. Mike probably has this idol. Yeah. And so they sort of thought I had it the whole time, yeah. you know? And it was buried, right? Yes. Yes. It, so it, so it's a little bit of a, like similar to what we, some of the idol hunts that we've seen in this season, right? Yeah. We had a map with a, we had like a treasure map that we had to follow. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. Dr. Mike. Then yes, Nick Callahan wants to ask you, were you annoyed at all the talk about how at tribal council a couple of weeks ago that Jeff was talking about, wow, 45 seasons and we've never seen anything like this when Sabaya was cooking her idol. You threw an idol into the tribal fire 10 seasons ago, hashtag and the Dr. Mike erasure. Did you feel like that when Sabaya put the candle in the fire that people were forgetting about when you threw an idol in the fire? I mean, Rob, we know that I love Jeff Probst. Right? We know I love him. Yes. Everybody loves Jeff Probst. Yes. There is no way that Jeff does not remember that I threw the idol in the fire. Yes. There's no way. There's no way, Rob. I mean, I think all of us mentally think there's going to be a ghost island too. Do you think there's mm -hmm. going to be a ghost island too at some point? Um, I don't think that there will be a Ghost Island 2. Really? No. I do. I think there will be a Ghost Island 2 season, and I think, without a doubt, my shell that I threw in the fire is going to be on that season. Mm -hmm. I do. Yes. But, Dr. And, Mike, was, was this not the antithesis of you throwing your idol into the fire? I mean, this was, if anything, you threw your idol into the, the fires of Mordor to destroy it. Sabaya put the wax candle into the idol to birth it. Right, but they, but it's the same. In other words, the concept of throwing the idol in the fire to do anything with the idol. Like, I mean, 
what I should have thrown a fake shell into the fire and kept the shell, right? Yeah, that would have been, that would have been, that, yeah. Right. That if, you think, if you're thinking correctly, that's what you do. But who's thinking correctly out there after so Very many days? People. Yeah. But like she's, I mean, the concept of putting the idol in the fire, putting the idol in the fire, I'm taking credit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if the buyer, if Jeff Probst got the idea to put the idol in the fire to burn it, you're welcome, Jeff. You would have liked I mean, to have seen that maybe some acknowledgement that when Sabaya puts the candle into the fire, right. that Jeff says, wow, pulling a real Dr. Mike here tonight, I see. That would have been amazing. Or it would have been nice if it was like the shell. She burned it down and there's a shell there. See, I, I think that what you did was different than this. I feel like if somebody destroyed an advantage at Tribal Council, that would be putting... That would be create, doing a Dr. Mike move. I think they will. Cre everybody will credit you if that happens. Okay. Well, great. I mean, I don't know if I need the credit. I just, I, I don't know. They better. They better credit yeah. you. I, I like the fact that for whatever reason we could say that like I've had some kind of an impact on this game. I really mm -hmm. do. Like I feel like Survivor is like a national institution. It's like an institution, right? That yeah. like transcends countries and like it, it's i mean it's a little beautiful what jeff is and his team have created yes and i uh, the fact that i can play a little part of history in that like that's sort of nice yeah so just remind me of the circumstances by which you threw that idol into the fire so it was that uh so lauren rimmer had it had an idol that needed two halves to it is that is that correct I mean, yes. Okay, and, and then want, she could so, not... so there's a story behind it, but yes. Okay. She, yeah. she found an idol that has a string. Right. It needed to get a shell at one of the challenges. She got the shell at the challenge. Now she had the string and the shell. Oh, and she let you hold the, the one shell. Of it. Yes. Yes. Maybe she had given parts of the string to other people to hold as well already. Right. But I threw the, the one half. Yeah, and is that also the same tribal council that she got voted out at? Yes. Okay, yeah. All right, and then ultimately... And she tried to give me her extra vote on the way out. Okay, so she had she, an extra vote she that she didn't use, and she had told them, oh, I didn't bring the extra vote, but if she had just used the extra vote, she would have, like, she would have stayed. If she used the extra, because that I, that... At that tribal council, isn't it that um, that every everybody single person vote voted for Ben and, and Ben, ben voted idol. for her and Ben right. voted for her? So if she would right. have had her ex played her extra vote, she would have put it on somebody else and not just uh, put another vote on Ben. Well, her and Chrissy went at it that night okay. about whether or not she had the extra vote, and she, Chrissy was like, "Give me the extra vote right now. Give it to me. If you want to work with me, you got to give me this extra vote." Something like that. Yeah. And she's like, "I don't have it, Chrissy. I don't have it, Chrissy." And that I, means something if she did have it and then and then put an extra vote on Chrissy. Well, she did have it. Yeah. And if she had just used it to vote it for Chrissy, <laughs> then like the I entire mean, game would have been, been different. Uh, really, uh, like to have the presence of mind to do all that, yeah, would have been amazing. Because uh, then, and then Chrissy, like on the tie break vote, then Chrissy would have got voted out. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. But. You did it. And look, I, I think that in this era of shared advantages, like should somebody, Dr. Mike, follow in your footsteps, should somebody throw the amulet into the fire? This three-person well, amulet. If what I, I would don't do, want this. What I would do with the amulet is I would say, well, first of all, if you did do that, do the other two amulets keep power? It's such a great like, question. Power? What, what would they say? What would Survivor say? Like, uh, sorry, Austin, you're out of the game. You had this amulet. That's your curse, and you are screwed. You threw the amulet in the fire. But here, here's a charred amulet. You don't get to just throw it away. Like, so what I would have done is I would have, I was Austin, and I want Emily to be on my side. I would have said, Emily, I got an idol from the island. And you can have it. 
I already have one. You can have it. Or I don't need it. I feel so comfortable. You can hold I don't the think item. You can give it away. I think that, that that is the thing. I think that we found out from Survivor 42. And again, this is like I, I passed this information along after somebody in the chat says it to me. But I think that Lindsay was not able to give Omer the um the the I the amulet to play as an idol. I think that she could have played it on him, but I don't think she was able to give it to him. But in other words, as a fake idol, she's just, he's just giving it to her as a fake idol because it's not really an idol, but it looks so good. Right. Everybody would believe it's a real idol. That's a good point. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But I do think well, that I mean, that if I walked up to you and I said, I found this, I got this idol here. You hold it. Yeah, you would well, think it's an idol. Producer tackle you and say, ah, that's an amulet. <laughs> and then be like, what's an amulet? You know? Mm -hmm. You I mean, can't that, give so, it to him. Take it back. Right. It gets very complicated. I'm, I, you know, I watch Survivor all the time, right? And I can't keep up with all of these advantages. It might be the kind of thing, like, if you tell the producer, hey, all right, here's what I'm thinking. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. And they like, and they would tell you no. But if you actually oh. did it, I don't know what they would do. Like, if they, if they would, like, pull everybody aside and say, ah, ah give that back it, to him. It's very complicated. I think... Part of the complication is that there's a lot of people, there's a lot of names, there's a lot of tribes, there's a lot of different tribe names, and there's a lot of advantages. And then mix that in with the fact that every single person watching Survivor is playing on their phones, mm -hmm. or swiping through TikTok, or playing Candy Crush. Like, no one can keep up. Mm -hmm. So you want it to be fast paced, but you also want to be able to follow it a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Then, Dr. Mike. We had a question I, from... I Matt. have a joke for you. Oh, please. I told you I was going to have a joke. You didn't okay. ask me what's the joke. Oh, what's the joke, Dr. Mike? So there's this guy. He's an older guy. He's like 80 years old, and he's walking through the park, and he gets tired, and he sits down on the bench. And he's sitting there, and this frog hops up to him. and who goes. Comes up, well, who comes up? A frog hops a frog. up to him. Yeah. And I was like, excuse me. And he looked, and he's like, hey, excuse me. Do you know, if you kiss me, I'm going to turn into a beautiful princess. Okay. And this guy puts a huge smile on his face, picks up the frog, looks at the frog, and then shoves the frog into his pocket. And the okay. frog's like, what, what are you doing? And he goes, at this age, I'd rather have a talking frog. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not as good as the other ones. Yeah. But it's clean. Yeah. Because uh, it's it's an indictment on how we treat our seniors, right? They're lonely more so than they need romance, right? They don't need the golden bachelor. They do need a friend. I mean, I, w I was just thinking it was a funny joke, Rob. Yeah. But, but, but I mean, I think, I mean, look, my, I mean, I think the gold, going back to the golden bachelor, I think it's so nice to see the golden bachelor finding love again. Mm -hmm. And I think it is very hard for people in the, in, that yeah. error of right. losing people. I think they also want to be able to uh, see, like, also want to be able to just feel useful. Once you retire, yes. I feel like, because I take care of so many people that have retired, right. they just want to feel like they have value. Have like, you seen a uptick in your business since the Golden Bachelor has come out and people have seen, was it Gary? Is that his name? I think so. Uh huh. Yes. And uh, he's out there, he's dating and more men are coming in because they want to get be back and be sexually active. I think that, I mean, I live in South Florida, Rob, these men. So the men that are older, who don't have spouses, they are hot commodities. Yeah. There are like the, there's a significantly more female to male ratio. And so, and they're hot commodities. Yeah, there. That's it's, I mean, it's, uh, that uh, that look. It's you something. don't need to uh, to tell us because uh, you know my my mom is out there, Doctor Mike. Where is she? <laughs> she's on Long. She's on Long Island, but now you know. Oh. Uh, you know, where the, me and my brother and sister hear these stories of the people people she's talking to, and it's like uh -huh. it's, it's a lot, Doctor Mike. I, I know. I mean, look, my mom unfortunately passed away a few years ago. Yes. And my dad is out there. And the joke is, is that he, uh, he's 80 something years old, like 81, I think, maybe 82. He can drive. 
he can dance. Wow. Like, I mean, I was at a bar mitzvah and we were partying together, right? Like he is a hot commodity and he like, so he was on all these like date, dating websites and now we found somebody and they're like serious now. Yeah. But it's a, uh, I mean, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. And like my wife, you know, unfortunately my wife's mom passed away also. And so my wife's dad is out there and yeah. he, uh, like, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, he's, a, he's, I, yeah. I, I look, I think there's, when you talk about like true love, I mean, I feel like your parents probably had a really nice relationship. How many years mm-hmm. are they married for? Oh, uh, you know, let me do the, the quick math. Uh, but yeah, uh, uh, 30? It's for a long no, time. 40, almost 40, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's like you and Nicole, right? Like you can't live with them, you can't live without them. Yeah. And, and it's, it's one of those things where like, you just want at the end of the day, people to be happy. And I'm sure mm-hmm. like, you want your mom, like you think of this like true love, which is amazing and I love it. But like, if something would happen to me, I want Barry to be happy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't want her to be lonely and sad all her entire life. I want her to... Too. Yeah. No, uh, that that's a great way to think about it. Uh, I would feel the same way. Uh, my wife has told me that um, if anything happens to her, uh, that I am not allowed to uh, ever see anybody else. Um, she said that <laughs> I'll be haunted. If my wife just told me to go find somebody else now, no, to stop bothering her. No, <laughs> and, and Nicole, you know, she does, she may not want me to be happy when she's here or when she's gone. So that's really, she feels very strongly about this, Dr. Mike. Oh, that's so funny. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I don't know. I might, like, it just depends on what day, how Barry feels, depending yeah. on the day I ask her. Yeah, that's that's I believe in her uh, living will of that. You know, I'm I'm never to ever uh, date anybody ever again. So that's you know that's we not. have chastity belts, like they're mm-hmm. male chastity belts that you, we can we can put on you. Yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> that maybe that could be in her living will also. Upon yeah. if anything should happen to her, uh, that's you know that she, I, yes. I once got called by the ER for like a male chastity belt. Was what happened? Stuck. It was like defective. Yeah, it got stuck on the guy. Yeah. And it, well, they say that they have like electronic ones and they get hacked. Well, right, right. And so like this guy, though, I said to them, just call a locksmith. Like, yeah. why do I have to come there with like, you know, the shears, like the, right. you're, you're, the wind cutting you're, shears. You operate on the body. You're not like uh, a, I'm not a, locksmith. a mechanic. Right. Right. Call a locksmith to get the thing off. They didn't. We had to go take it off. But right. And then if, if there's a mishap with the locksmith, that's where you come in. That's how it should be. Yeah. But like for me to be using like, you know, ring cutters on a guy's penis because they don't want to call a locksmith because just because they never have before. It's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So if that happens to any of our listeners, like don't, don't call Dr. Mike first. Yeah. Call the, the 24 hour locksmith. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea yeah. how, how ridiculous it was the picture it's like oh my god they they sent the picture to you what to, to like see if you had like a hairpin to see if you could pick a lock no i think when i was there i took a picture oh you were oh you got to the point where oh i had to go yes you, you so you so that did the locksmith come in then no they refused to call the locksmith so what did you do you oh you did the you had the, i had to the, use the shears <sighs> Cut the thing off. Like, why do you even have that as a piece of of equipment? They have it in the ear for rings. It's like a wedding ring gets stuck on your finger. uh, Okay, got it, got it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. They have, like, I mean, I've tried the Jaws of Life. I mean, you know, my, I mean, we've talked about this, I think, but, like, the craziest thing I ever saw was a guy that, like, got, like, a a weight stuck on him. Yeah. We don't need to talk about that. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Okay. (laughs) And those, it didn't work, the the shears. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> Dr. Mike. Um, yeah. He was having sex uh, with a 10 pound weight. Seafood. What about Sifu? Right? Right? <laughs> that he's a person. Uh, Sifu has a. Uh, Rachel has a question for you about Sifu. Hi, Rob. Hi, Dr. Mike, my favorite penis doctor. <laughs> oh. um, this is Rachel from Michigan. I was wondering, there's been so much discussion about the Reba votes this last episode. And one thing I haven't really heard about was 
did D play this correctly? Um, so we know that Sean voted for D and D voted for Sifu. But if D is playing off with her stone cold serial killer face saying, no, I didn't vote for you. Um, that means that if she believes Sean voted for Sifu, that means that unless one of her girls turned on her, Sifu had to have voted for her. So in, you know, Sifu's coming back to camp with a Rupert-esque uh, anger, uh, who voted for Sifu. Should D have countered that a little bit with her own, her own, you know, outrage, um, trying to pin her vote on Sifu? Or, uh, like, how... I feel like we didn't really hear, you know, she said something in the episode like never feels good to see your name on there, but it doesn't seem like she's pointing any fingers at anybody. So I was just curious to get your thoughts. Um, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Rachel. Yeah. We were talking about this a little bit uh, earlier. Uh, you Did you say, uh, what would you do if you were D? I mean, I would have told him, like gotten mad at him for voting for her, for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's no. very easy to say. But at the time, you're just sort of like, oh, shit. You know, and you don't know if your other girls are going to turn on you. Yes. And so you just sort of like, I don't like. Right. You just want it to go away. I totally get it. But I am sure that D has a fire in her that she just, at some point, she's hopefully going to let loose, which I think will be very entertaining to all of us. Mm -hmm. I really like D. I think, like, so I think that, like, final four of, you know, you talk about, like, a, Rob Queen, so to speak, right? Like yes. that final four of D and the other woman and Julie. and and Austin and Drew. Yeah, I could I could see that as the final four, and I don't know who's going to take it out of those four. I could see D, like I could see D winning, but I don't know. You know, I feel like they're not necessarily giving them enough cred, but like you know, because the women tend to play like more of a like DL type of game than like. Going back to old school, where the the men find more more idols, the men find more advantages, and the women have more of this strategic game. Like somehow D got J to say tell Sifu that she was going to vote for him. Yeah, like like that has to be a little bit of strategic genius there. Genius there, you know. It did seem like it was J Maya's idea on her own, but D was like, "Hey, let's let's do it and let's vote out J Maya." <laughs> Why not? Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, uh, could could you, I didn't really understand the train of thought. I'm going to tell him that I voted for him, even though I didn't vote for him. I, I think she really just does not like him and really wants him to go home. I, I think that that will blind you into like having some crazy ideas on Survivor. Yeah. I mean, like I've told people that I didn't vote for them to get an advantage, like to try to hopefully yeah. garner advantage. I've never told somebody that. Well, I would never think about telling them that I did vote for them just to piss them off. Mm -hmm. But All I right. do think, but do you remember? Yes. I think it was Michael Yerger at yeah. one point is sitting on the truck on the beach and turns to Wendell and is like, Hey, Wendell, how do you spell your name again? Oh, yeah. I, that, I don't remember that. <laughs> it was one of, <laughs> like, is he so, joking? No. Yeah. I don't think he was. And then I think he goes home the next episode. Yeah. So it's like, so I think like some people, when you get out there, they might, they do crazy things to just antagonize each other. Yeah. Okay. All right. I don't know yeah. if that happened. I don't know if it was Wendell. I don't remember if it was Michael Yerger, but I think that happened. All right. So Mike Skull wants to know, Dr. Mike, would you go for sandwiches or the advantage? I mean, it's a great question. I think the whole thing is that Austin is going back to eat nothing and everybody else is going back to eat fish yeah so like both of the other tribes had one fish they don't need a sandwich they're getting fish an hour later but austin is going back to have no fire and no fish yeah so that's why he probably wanted to do the sandwiches plus he was probably just hungry yeah but I, so, so i mean i definitely would have gone for the i definitely would have gone for the advantage yeah now do you and, feel like the advantage puts a target on your back though you have the target on you. You didn't know what, well, did you know what the advantage was at that point? You did, right? I did, yes. The three-way amulet, yeah. Yeah, I still would have gone for the advantage. I mean, it's just for the drama of it, right? Like, 
Mm-hmm. You don't go on to that. Like, you know, I remember, like, right before the season starts. Yeah. They said to the producer said this. Look, if it doesn't happen on TV, it doesn't happen. So we're all here to make a really good TV show. Like, make sure you don't do stupid like shit. Not on TV. Don't find an idol. Not on television. You know. And mm-hmm. so because they're like, you could go out by yourself. Let's say you go into the bathroom, but you better not find an idol because then it's not on television. And so I feel like it's the same thing. Like, you know, you're out there to make a good television show. That's not, nobody in the audience wants to see you eat a sandwich. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, if I was out there, like, I I mean, I'm sure I'd be thinking like, how am I going to explain this to Barry? Oh yeah, I was really hungry. I had to eat the sandwich. Yeah. (laughs) And then you go home, like everybody else, except for one person, they're going to be like, Mike, you wouldn't have gone home with me. You had the advantage. Mm-hmm. Mike, yeah. we sent you out there. You left I us for 39 days in, to eat a sandwich. Instance, though, I just feel like that, that amulet does. I hear what you're saying as far as like, hey, make good TV. But I, I feel like that that advantage d- does like it's designed to put like the producers are trying to make good TV at your expense. I feel like with that amulet, I feel like that. Yeah. Why don't I like walk out of here with this ticking time bomb so that I'm going to be, you know, there's a, you know, 66% chance that the other two people are going to be trying to get me out of the game because I have this. Yes. They're going to have a good show, whether you win or not, you know, it's like, why do I just like avoid stepping on the landmine? But when you're out there, you think this story is about me. Yes. That's the whole thing is that like every person out there thinks the entire survivor story is going to be about that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I didn't think that, but I think a lot of people did. Right. Yeah. So like, and they do things they have in their head, what they need to do to get on more airtime. I never mm-hmm. once thought about airtime, you know, like I just, I didn't think about it, but like Joe, He's going crazy on me for airtime. These people, they're doing whatever for airtime. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's uh, let's see. Um, how about a question from JB underscore Dina, who says, everybody has been saying that the Lulu 2, that's Emily and Caleb, are going to sneak their way all to the end because no one knows what the Tika 3 did last season. But there's someone who does know Bruce, is Bruce going to target Emily and Caleb because he knows what happened on Survivor 44? Who are the Tika 3? Who are the Tika 3, Dr. Mike? You ever hear of Jam Jam, Carson, and Carolyn? Yes. So how are they... How would they, Emily? And I mean, I I don't because follow. The two, well, the two sides went to war, and nobody was worried about Jam Jam and Carson and Carolyn, and then they went all the way to the final four. Yeah, but I don't know. I mean, I think that's any season, right? Yeah. Like, it I would think have been like season. just like if the healers or if the hustlers and the heroes forgot about you and Joe Mena, and you went all the way to the end. Yeah, I mean, somebody has to go all the way to the end. Somebody mm-hmm. needs to have a story, right? Yep. So I think, and I think it's interesting. What's happened is, is that there is, because it's a 90 minute episode, we are getting more of these stories from different players. So like on my tribe, we had Ben's story, maybe a couple of the story, like Lauren's story, like, but I like probably on 36, you had Wendell's story and Dominic's story. But, like, here we're really understanding how you can have, like, Austin and his core group of four going. You Mm -hmm. can see how uh, Caleb and Emily can go. I mean, I think Sifu has this, like, I mean, I I don't know how Sifu's getting there. but, But he could, right? Like, and I think that would be fascinating because he was busted spying on people the first day. You know, like, I feel like we are... Like everybody sort of has this storyline. It's interesting to see how they're interconnecting. Yeah. All right, then, Dr. Mike. Let me I didn't ask answer you, the question. You did, not really, but, um, you know, you, you didn't really seem to think that uh, Emily and Bruce, or uh, Emily and Caleb are too much of a, a concern. I mean, what do you think about Bruce? Um, in what way? I think Bruce is in trouble. I mean, 
do you think Bruce, like Bruce is out there. Bruce is funny. And Bruce is, I bet you he is the life of every party that he goes to at home. Yeah. But do you think he's enough self-awareness to realize that he's annoying people? Or do you think that really he's actually entertaining everybody and people are just complaining it like, and a couple of people complain about him annoying them because I, you know, I, I mean, as, as much as I really enjoy Bruce, like, I think the answer to that is I, I don't think he necessarily is getting that he is getting on Katura's nerves until the point when she is like actively acting like she dislikes him. Uh, I don't think he sees that Caleb is having any sort of issues with, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, being bossy around Caleb. So, yeah, I don't think that Bruce sees it. So you, so I think Bruce is hilarious for the record. Yes. But you think he has a self awareness issue? I think so. I mean, uh, yeah. not in life, but I think uh, in terms of his survivor game, I do think that he is in danger. I could see that. I could see him being the person who goes home at the merge. I the, I could see that because he's a big, strong guy, and they say those are the people that go home at the merge. Yeah. I could see. I and I could see Katura flipping on him, and Emily, uh, was you know, did not love uh, working with Bruce. So, yeah. yeah, Bruce, I think he's feeling like, hey, I'm going to stick with the blue and stick with the, my uh, tribe, but I don't think they're all ready to stick with Bruce. Uh huh. Now, I just started worrying that maybe Caleb's going to be the merge vote. That would be so sad. No, I don't think so. I, I I'd be very surprised if he ends up being the merge vote. Okay. Who has idols at this point? Really, only Austin, and uh, and honestly, he needs to. He, his idol doesn't even work yet. He needs to um, bank another vote for the idol to work. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, so I mean, that's so fast. I can't. I couldn't keep up, and so it's like Imagine I didn't know who's on what season, Doctor Mike, where the idols don't aren't even working at one of the votes. I mean, that's crazy. It's Imagine going to a tribal council where nobody has an idol. <laughs> that would be something. That would be mm -hmm. something. That is that yeah, what how it got crazy now, right? It's almost back to the basics. <laughs> <laughs> you could go to a tribal council, Dr. Mike, and any person could get voted out. I don't believe that. Yeah. That's what <laughs> that that's where we're at going into the next week. I mean, six people will be safe because of merger short, but after that, only the person that wins the immunity challenge. What do you mean? Because are they doing that mergatory? Merg mergatory, yes. I mean, that's a staple. They only do that now, every time now. Well, I thought they just did it for the last two seasons. No, they've done it every season in the 40s. What, where like half the tribe wins a challenge yes. and it's safe? Yes. Do you like that? No. Okay. <laughs> no. Yeah, at least they got rid of the hourglass. Yeah, I mean, I didn't like the hourglass either. No, nobody did. Feel, um, yeah. All right. Whatever. Mike, okay. Here, let, let me play you a question now. Uh, Br there was Bruce. There was some talk about some of the Bruceisms that he was doing in the tribe. Uh, Billy has a question about uh, something go in regards to Bruce. Hey, this is Billy, and longtime listener had a question for the feedback show um, for Dr. Mike. I wanted to know what Dr. Mike thought about push presence and whether or not there is a male equivalent. Thanks. Looking forward to the show. Bye. Dr. Mike, um, did you hear when Bruce was talking about uh, that he didn't oh, yeah. know what the push presents were? Yeah. I mean, and I feel like you asked Stephen what he got his wife yes. as a push present, yes. right? And he said, I got her the best present. So, I mean, here's the thing. Obviously, everybody knows what did a push present is. Did he say what the is. present was? No. No, he never did. He never did. He never I didn't. Did. I didn't want to pry. I bet it was something good. Yeah. I, I, I mean, my. I told. I offered my wife push presents. I don't think she ever actually took one. Wow. Like, I think a push present is me leaving her alone. Yes. But during the delivery. No, not during the delivery. Oh. Delivery, I'm there for her. But like, yeah. just in general, right? Like, I. But everybody knows what a push present is. If your wife wants a present, you should get her a present. I yeah. think the male equivalent is. After a vasectomy, you can get oh. a present. Yes. Do do right. wives get husbands a uh, vasectomy presents? They let them have sex with them again. Okay, that's the, <laughs> not for a while. You gotta wait a, a while, right, Doctor Mike? Like three months. Yeah, three months three, or twenty ejaculations. You have to wait no. three months. 
No, you can have sex like a day later, but you, uh, you can't the, have the, unprotected yeah. sex or right, you right, can't stop right. doing the way what you've been doing for 20 ejaculations or three months. Yes. So, so and, and that, to this way. that too, in a way, is a push present, right? Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that what, you know, there is pushing that goes on after that. There is pushing that goes on, I think. Yes. Yes. What about when do you ever have people come in and they have to pass a stone? Do they get a present? Does anybody get a push present for uh, any Good sort question. of like a kidney stone? Yeah, not once. Never. I've never heard of it or seen it. Yes. But that would be something nice to do for someone. But I, you know what? Maybe we should sell like T-shirts as presents or something. Like I passed the stone and all I got with this lousy T-shirt. Mm hmm. I mean, you could get the merch going, Dr. Mike. Yeah. I feel like I need, I, I am not good with merch. I got my zoology shirt, but like, yeah, that's basically it. Okay. Um, Dr. Mike, we got a question from Gilly who wanted to know, uh, did Dr. Mike ever play Pokemon? I never played Pokemon. I never played Pokemon Go or any of those stuff. No, but I was digging it. And going back to what you said, I don't know why he didn't just say, Drew didn't say, let's form the Pokemon Alliance. Like, yeah, I don't Pokemon understand Pokemon Alliance, that would be good. Yeah, like, I don't really quite, I feel like that, but I feel like these things that they show us must have significance. So, like, when you see, like, Caleb and uh kelly talking and caleb saying it's important for me to be with kelly there has to be significance there or you want to believe there is like mm -hmm. in this storyline of survivor when you see drew making a strategic mistake of saying no i'm not going to be in a pokemon alliance with you that tells me drew's not winning that tells me drew has to go home at some point so people can say he made this mistake i thought he was going home in the episode oh interesting by the like, I, oh, he didn't. He didn't want an alliance. All right, he's gonna go home in this episode. So I was surprised when it was Brando. Interesting. I thought I thought it was gonna be the girl. I forgot her name em already. Emily. Kendra. No, the other one. Kendra. Oh. I thought it was gonna be Kendra. Okay. But because why wouldn't you keep the Pokemon guy around? <laughs> he seemed like a nice guy. He seemed like a really nice guy, and Kendra seems a little like a loose cannon. Yeah. Yes, he is a loose cannon. It seems like she's so fun. But like, yeah. you can't like, who knows, you know, you just don't know with her. Dr. Mike, uh, Ms. Me says, uh, Dr. Mike, how was your recent visit with Jay from Survivor and the Challenge? What, what do you do when you and Jay star at Hangout? I, we climb. That's what we do. So yes. Jay and I, when I got home, I started climbing. Jay, the gym had just opened. Jay started climbing and we, st we climbed together. We used to climb together all the time and they moved to California. So now when he comes home, we climb. Yeah. So we okay. climbed and ate tacos afterwards because there are literally like five taco places across the street from the climbing gym. I don't understand all it. All the taco places are all across the street from the climbing gym? Literally all the taco places, like the authentic Mexican restaurants in South Florida, are within a block of the climbing gym. Hmm. And we both were Is it significantly... like Little Mexico? Is that like the neighborhood? I, I, I've never heard it called that before, but yeah. maybe. Maybe. But literally, both of us were sick for 36 hours after that. Wait, oh, no. You had ga gastrointestinal distress from the tacos? I, they were probably. Probably. Oh we had some issues. We had some taco you issues. You sure you didn't eat a worm? There, I mean, we might have. But I don't think so. I mean, it was like, you know, everybody has their favorite taco place over there. But I had only been to one, and we didn't yeah. go to that one. Well, yeah. So what happened? Jay picked out the new one? somebody there was like, oh, you got to go to the one right across the street. Yeah. And it's it's they hard. Got it, they got yeah, it. they okay. did get to. So, uh, yeah, I don't know about... Uh, so let me ask you this. The nerds, the nerd alliance. Yeah. Did you, like, did you guys ever try forming this alliance? Do you know anybody else that's ever tried forming an alliance? Well, I don't think there were any other nerds on my season of Survivor. That's like back when I used to play on Survivor, like I was the nerd. There was one, there was one nerd. You didn't have enough nerds to have an, an alliance. I was yeah, the nerd. I, mean, I was the nerd who got invited to be in the alliance with the cool people. Right. I mean, I feel like yeah, but I probably I was the nerd. I'm a nerd too. and I'm hanging out with cool people. I always said I'm either the nerd that the cool people are willing to hang out with or the cool person that the nerds love. 
Yeah. But I think I'm the nerd that the cool people are willing to hang out with. <laughs> yeah. Like probably in in your real life, uh, you're the you're the coolest person. Um, but you know, on on Survivor. But now there's you know, you're lucky if you're on Survivor now. But may, maybe that people feel like, hey, I want to be the only nerd. I think. Uh, maybe, maybe yeah. I think it's, it might be a good move to get rid of your archetype, right? I always wondered that. Like, if you see other people that are like you, is it better to keep them because you understand them, or is it better to get rid of them because you know they're going to be good at puzzles? You know they're yeah. going to be good at this. You know exactly what they're going to be you good at. You get to stand out more if you get rid of the other people that are in your lane. Yeah. So, okay, something to think about. All right. I've got some things for you from social media, Dr. Mike. Uh, okay. this, this My is one. iPad might die soon, by the way. So we got to. Okay, I'll keep this. I'll keep this I mean, we can, we can keep talking for hours, apparently. I but... know we can. Yeah, I'll keep this tight. Okay, uh, Dr. Mike. Here's one from. We like to check in with what survivors are saying on social media. Uh, here's Maddie uh, from Survivor 44. She was a guest on the feedback show recently. She wants to know. When are people going to start making out? We have like eight people in their 20s and it's time that all eight of them kiss. Dr. Mike, do you recommend this for the survivors? I mean, not to get into this realm, but mm -hmm. are couples allowed on Survivor anymore? I mean, um, maybe if that was part of the theme. I don't think they would cast couples that... No, but you know. I mean, like, are you allowed to couple off on Survivor? Oh, I mean, did you see last season? We had a showmance. First showmance since uh, since Jessica and Cody. Cole. Uh, but Cole. <laughs> but we Sorry. didn't really have a showmance. I mean, did, we didn't... It became yeah, a showmance. Franny. Yeah, they it were right there. But it became a showmance. But I don't think we actually saw them affectionate with each other in the show mm -hmm. so in other words yeah i mean I, look i agree with you i don't know why all these people aren't like loving each other like it was like a we would joke that my beach was bachelor beach right like what because it was like like everybody was single but me on the show right you would think we would have more now dr mike because 26 days yeah. i mean people that their breath doesn't even get that bad in 26 days you're right you're right it's not like, you know, hey, oh, I haven't brushed my teeth in 35 days. No, you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they don't even yeah. eat. So it's not like, uh, you know, as long can as I you make a comment? a worm. Yeah. Can I make a comment because I'm going to forget it? Yeah. To all of the slingshot Survivor fans out there, when you fire a slingshot, yeah. you should be pulling it on both ends with both hands to keep it straight. The concept of pulling it with one hand and then straightening it with this hand, it's going to go off, off, uh, like, is that what happened to Steven right. Fishback? I don't know. I maybe, but like, you know, I practiced these things before I went out there and that's what I learned about slingshots. And when you look at the people doing it, the people that are doing it with two hands are significantly more accurate than well, the other one. Two hands. Right. I think so. Okay. Um, Dr. Mike, are you doing anything for Halloween? No, we just give out candy. The kids are all are probably going candy. to parties. Are, are you yeah. interested in seeing some uh, Survivor-themed Halloween costumes? Yes, definitely. Okay. Are there some? Yeah, here's some from Twitter. Okay, real real quick. We can look at these. Okay. All right. Here's here's one. Uh, this is uh, this this person went to a uh, Halloween party. Okay. And uh, this is from Gabe Bergato. Uh, he has this Halloween costume. Yeah, I saw stuff. this. I loved this. He said, I hate gay Halloween parties. Uh, it's like, uh, what do you mean uh, you're the last gasp challenge from Survivor? So Owen tweeted it out. Uh, but here it is. The last gasp challenge from Survivor. Drink, having a drink. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's so much better than the Boston Robin Amber one that you see every year. Yeah. You know? It's too much. Okay. All right. Um, then how about uh let me see if I've got uh an uh any more survivor Halloween costumes. Okay. Um, what would you be if you we're gonna have a Halloween costume contest when, at the live show at Brea this week? 
I mean, my yeah. best, the best Halloween costume that we ever were was Barry was pregnant. She wore a white sheet and a yellow tank top and cut a circle out and was an egg before Gwen Stefani did it. Yes. And I dressed up like a sperm. I had a okay. white skull cap and a tail and I had a sperm shirt and we called ourselves Life. Life. Wow. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, here's another one. Okay. Uh, this is somebody was, um, do you remember last season, Dr. Mike, uh, when Carson was selling a pillow, right? Uh, here's somebody named Logan who also hates going to gay Halloween parties. Uh, it's like w WTF. Uh, do you mean you're Carson Garrett's pillow? I mean, everybody's dressing up like Carson. I feel like if there was a gazillion people dressing up like Carson, there could be the Carson lookalike alliance. Yeah. Okay. Um, so... Look, people are doing a lot of Survivor Halloween costumes. All right. Dr. Mike, what else is going on? You ready for the merge? That's, I mean, I am. I think it was just a great, great episode. I mean, I really, like, I'm so happy to talk about this episode. I was so happy to talk about Survivor. I'm and so happy I think to you're doing a, you, Dr. Mike. I think you're doing an amazing job. Yes. Okay. I I do. I think they're doing an amazing job. Okay. Dr. Mike, I know you, you yes, sent me an, ur an urgent uh, message. Uh, do you need, do you need uh, a, a intermission while I uh, wrap things up, Dr. Mike? I think so. Okay. All right. I well, uh, Dr. Can Mike. Can I come back in one minute or are we yes, done? Yes. No, we're, we're going to, you go, you go, I'll wrap things up. Okay. Okay. Guys, it was great. I will talk to you guys soon. And you, I'll you, see you later. You, you want to go and come back? Sure. Yeah, here, I'll take you off okay. the screen. Okay. All right. So Dr. Mike, he's just taking uh, a, you know, nature calls. And so thank you so much for checking out our feedback show. Great fun to catch up with Dr. Mike. If you miss any of our other podcasts, be sure to check them out. I am going to be heading out to Brea, California for two nights of events, Wednesday and Thursday night this week. So if you want to be with us in person, head on over to robinswebsite.com slash events. Uh, you are not going to believe the lineup that we have coming to Brea, California. So if you have any chance to be there with us in person, you are not going to want to miss uh, this one Wednesday night and Thursday night live from Brea, California. Those podcasts uh, will be out for you. Then on Thursday, we'll post our show from Brea, California. So uh, that should be uh, a really, really fun one. As well, not to mention uh, we're wrapping up the season of Big Brother, all of our amazing race coverage and more, not to mention daily coverage of Suits over on Suits Yourself. You can get links to everything we're doing over at robhasawebsite.com slash subscribe. We do hope that everybody has a wonderful Halloween on the 31st. Hope everybody has a safe Halloween and stays out of any mischief either from hooligans that roam the streets or the evil, decrepit spirits that roam uh, the graveyards all over the place uh, and whatnot, as Dr. Mike is back. Dr. Mike, thank What's you up? so much again for coming on with us. No, thank you guys for having me. It is always a pleasure. I think that like it's an amazing community that you've built here, and you should be so proud of yourself and your entire team. Well, th thank you, Dr. Mike. Um, Dr. Mike, I appreciate you. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye. Take care, guys.